Good afternoon. My name is Joe Mock, President of North America. Uh, today I've got Rob sitting with me. Rob is the general manager of, of Eigen. Uh, Rob and I have known each other for several years, uh, but I would say really over the past year since I took over as president, I've got to know your business and the partnership uh, so much better. So let's start with your company's success, right? So we've been partners, we were just talking about, for 20, 25 years. Uh, you've been in business for 25 years, managing payments for thousands of merchants. What advice would you give to other companies about success in the industry? So thanks, Joe. I'm going to say that it's really about creating value. So it's really focus on creating the customer value. So a couple of ways we do that, for example, at Eigen, is uh, one of the things is, is we have a run a managed service to payments. And that's not necessarily unique, but it, it, it is something that we're finding that more and more merchants want that managed service. They want um, somebody to look after their payment solution, you know, from cradle to grave sort of thing. Right, so that means, what does that mean? That means um, making sure that when devices show up on site that they're properly loaded with software, they're ready to go, the configuration's correct, it's got the keys loaded. It's not like, uh, you know, go buy something uh, from, from this supplier and hope it works. So, and, and it means, you know, backing it up with help desk services, it means uh, estate management, all of those things. So that's really one way we, you know, we focus on value. Another example example of where focusing on value, and, and actually Brian from Nordstrom touched on it last, and that's on the security side. And he, you know, Brian mentioned security really is number one. And we are heavily focused on that security side as well. So I, I think as you know, Joe, we are actually a, uh, a PCI listed and validated P2P company. That was something that we partnered with Verifone uh, to, to get that done. Uh, but it is creating tremendous value. We're, we're hearing it now from the merchant base. We're seeing it a lot in retailers, like as Brian mentioned. Uh, we're also seeing it quite a bit now in the, in the uh, hospitality lodging space as well, where, where they're really looking at that. So, yeah, to, to your question, it really focus on the value, and I think that, you know, that will enable you to have a long, a long run at it. Yeah, I think you had two great comments there, which I completely agree with, which is, you know, merchants, our clients, right, it all starts with the client in the center. If we take care of that, right, they want to get out of the payments mm -hmm. business. They want to leave that to the people that are experts at it. Mm -hmm. Then I think the second comment you made, I heard a, a joking comment one time made about plug and pray, right? Yeah. That's, what, that's what merchants want to avoid is, right, have these, all this technology is great, but if it doesn't work, at the end of the day, it's not worth anything, and that's really the value that, that Eigen brings. So let's, um, let's drill down a little bit and get a little bit more specific. So uh, restaurants, right? We, we look at this as a, as a greenfield opportunity. Uh, we've got some good projects that we've worked on together. But tell us why and what you forecast for pay at the table in this table service space um, in the U.S. over the next five years. Okay. Great question, actually. So... As we know in the U.S. Uh, space right now, the majority of all transactions are still done mag swipe, which insecure, okay, so there's going to be a lot of chargeback, frauds happen from that. And if we take our cue from really what happened in Europe and in Canada, uh, we see those two, that really what happened, it was somewhere around the two to three year mark after the liability shift, that all of a sudden pay at the table devices really got over that hump right and kind of got to that uh, critical mass in the two to three year space and then it probably took you know as much as five years in the Canadian space before the uh, pay at the table was truly ubiquitous and you know if you go into Canada now pay at the table is ubiquitous it's everywhere so really uh, if we take our cue from that I really see that same thing playing out in the U.S. market. Now, is it going to be the traditional pay-at-the-table device, or is it going to be more something like this, right? The, uh, uh, here's the Verifone E285 device. You think I work for them. Uh, <laughs> um, but here's the Verifone E285 device, and it's in a billfold style. So it might be more something like this. It may not have a receipt to it. 
but uh, you can text or email the receipt. So maybe this uh, this is the way it's going to go. But it'll be some form, I truly believe, within the next, uh, uh, you know, probably another year, we're going to start hitting more critical mass. Yeah. I, I know there's a lot of customers that are kind of kicking the tires right now. There's a lot of pilot projects going on. We're getting more and more interest. And the things that are driving it are, are the things like the security that we mentioned. So if we you know, drill down on this a little bit more, if you take a look at it, what do you think the, the benefits of pay at the table are at for me as a consumer, um, number one, and then number two, I mean, you did talk about chargebacks. I think these restaurants are experiencing chargebacks, which impacts their bottom line to what Brian just spoke about. But what are the, what do you see as the, as the number one or two benefits for the consumer and then top one or two benefits for, uh, for the restaurants? Right. So, so specifically pay at the table. So there's, uh, you know, even a, a, a tethered wired solution is, as long as it's got the P2P encryption in it, you're still going to get, um, you know, the security benefits. But specifically to pay at the table, I think there's really two things to focus on, and that is efficiency and the customer experience. And I think that the where it's been successfully implemented, the uh, the restaurant companies, the restaurant merchants understand that they get it, and that's what they push. So let's first talk about efficiency, right? Yeah. So uh, so today a typical um, table service restaurant that bill process is about a 12-step process. You know, by the time they uh, they print the bill, they bring it, they go back, they come back, go back again, yeah. have to put it, you know, the tip amount, everything in. It's about a 12-step process. When you go to a pay at the table device, a traditional one, it, it takes it down to a six step process. So right there, now, and now we haven't done any studies. Actually, that's a good idea that Verifone and Eigen should do a study together on how this would work. I'll sign right? up for that right now. <laughs> right? And because there's definitely efficiencies. How much efficiency? I don't know. Call it, call it conservatively, I think, 30 seconds. And if, uh, if your restaurant does 10,000 um, transactions in a month and you save 30,000, you guys do the math, right? Yes. But what that really enables, uh, that efficiency really enables better customer service. Because that 30 seconds that that server is not spending on their payment, they're na now able to spend it with the customer. And I think that's the big thing here, right? So let's focus on that efficiency. Efficiency also drives uh, improved table turns. Again, that'll be part of our uh, study we do. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, it improves that. And we also see that the pay at the table devices, obviously they improve tips. Yeah, that's a, it's a really great way to look at it, right? 12 steps down to six, I mean, 30 seconds. I mean, 30 seconds, if I sat here and tried to be quiet for 30 seconds, it never happened to start with. But if it's a long time, right? And so when you think about a customer, an extra 30 seconds, it's a big deal, yeah. the table turn. Uh, maybe just uh, one more question for you. Uh, as you think about this, pay at the table. Is, is, it, is it pay at the table? Is it table side ordering? You know, what do you see this evolving to, right? Because we know what you, know, you see in Europe and what you see in Canada. It's going to be a lot different in the States, I believe. And so do you see a lot of the same sort of pay at the table with the receipt printer? Do you see folio? Do you see table side ordering? Where do you see this space potentially going? Definitely table side ordering, but it's not necessarily going to be paired with payment, to be honest, right? Because when you think about it, so if, if you have a, a tablet device from your restaurant point of sale company, and this has, uh, you know, it's an expensive device, and it also has access right into your restaurant management system, so everything for it. Do you want to be necessarily leaving that device at the table, right, with the customer? You know, I don't think so. And these are these they're as expensive if not, you know, they're more expensive than the than the actual payment devices themselves. So again, I'm not sure whether you're gonna necessarily see it coupled. There's obviously some implementations today. We do one ourselves where we have like a, an E355 device that's coupled onto the back of a, of a tablet. And so you can actually table side and then you can do payment afterwards. So I definitely, you know, that's a possibility. But we actually like the model and when we actually talk to our restaurant customers, they also agree with us that at the end of the day, you know, maybe a separate device is better. Whether it's a billfold type device like this, whether it's a traditional pay at the table device like a uh, VX690 or, or obviously the new Engage line as well. Um, shamelessly plugging. <laughs> You're doing an incredible job. 
Um, so uh, whether it be one of those devices, I, I think it's going to be kind of separate. There's still obviously going to be implementations of table side and payment, but I see the majority is going to actually be separate devices. That's great. So uh, probably one last question on pay at the table. So we did a press release, I think a year ago, perhaps NRF last year, about the keg house. I think we were in the, the rollout phase with, with the keg house. What's the feedback been uh, from our mutual client? Yeah. So this is the, uh, the keg steakhouse. Keg Steakhouse Steak House. and Bar. And actually, they're a, they've been a long-time uh, Eigen client, actually, in the Canadian space. And so in their American stores, in their U.S. stores, they, uh, they rolled out the solution as well. And, you know, they get it. They really do get it. They, they, see, they see the efficiency of it. They see the increased security that it buys them. Right? They see that improvement in, in the customer service. So they really understand stand it. I mean, they're, they're great. Um, account for us, you know, that we use all the time that we can uh, say to other people, hey, talk to these guys, go to their one, their locations. You know, if you go to a, a, a location that has a pay at the table today, and you sit and you talk to a server, as I often do, and my, the family thinks I'm always weird, oh, here goes dad again, has to talk about the payment process, who cares about that, right? But I always, you know, kind of in a secret shopper mode, I sit there and, and I ask uh, pay at the table. and in almost all cases, the servers themselves, they say, well, we don't know what we would do without this. Like, they are just the greatest things. Like, and that comes from the server. Because they see the efficiency, right? And it makes their job way easier. And, obviously, they get, it, it is a fact they get improved tips, right? So when you're right there uh, and a suggested tip, tips do go up. Again, that will be part of our study, I think, to show Excellent. that. All right. We're, I guess we're committed to doing the study, so I like that. Uh, so tell me about, you know, so we spent a lot of time here talking about pay at the table and the restaurants. Um, certainly, Eigen serves a lot of different clients out there. I believe you've got uh, some, some things you do inside of airports. You've got some retail customers. What, what trends are you seeing in, in other spaces uh, that, that you guys service? So, so I think for us, it, it, it's really about, um, you know, challenge, um, not cha it, the challenges that retailers, uh, we mentioned the hospitality space that they're seeing and actually finding solutions to their challenges. So it, it doesn't seem to be one size fits all anymore, right? It's, it's, there's all these unique challenges. And so you take a base product like we do with our integrated product suite and with the P2P encryption, and then we typically have to add some sort of uh, customization on top of that. So one of our, uh, a customer of ours, uh, Camping World, which I think it's getting a lot of uh, press lately with the uh, baseball championship series and stuff like that. Um, one of the things they needed was, was they actually do, they have a private label card, and they do, um, they do credit apps right on the screen of an MX915 device. And so they needed a solution to take that right away, be able to, to get that approved, get the card number, right away use that, use that private label card for that purchase. And, and through our code and through some customizations, we enabled that for them. Another example is, um, is uh, Lush Cosmetics, uh, where, where they were looking for a basically a, you could call it line busting or you could call it um, really adding a cheap way to add more capacity, more lanes in their busy season. And so we put together uh, with them, it's the E355, the Verifone E355 device, and it's paired on the other side with actually an iPod Touch application. And they can scan a device, take payment right there. It was a tremendous, tremendous hit over the Christmas season. I know Excellent. that. Wonderful. So as we talked about, 20 year relationship that we've had. So over the years, how has Verifone helped Eigen grow? So it's, it's all started when uh, Joe Mock came on board and, <laughs> okay, <laughs> no. The hyper growth, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hockey stick. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, it has been a long relationship and, and uh, with, with at the um, risk of getting a little syrupy here, I'm going to say, right? I'm going to say it's, re it's really based on two things, right? And that is commitment and trust, right? So that's really what our relationship's been about. Um, uh, you know, Joe, you, your team of people, um, there's been a lot uh, uh, of things we've done 
in trust over the years. Uh, when we developed our P2PE solution, for example, and got that um, done, you know, there was a lot of missing pieces as we were going through there. But, you know, we were said to trust Verifone. We would get things like the VRK, the Verifone remote key uh, injection working, which is a key part of the solution. But I don't know how you can actually implement a P2P solution at, without having remote key loading on it, which we do. Uh, that's huge. So we were able to uh, really fill those gaps, but we did it kind of based on trust. And I think the trust over the years has been there. And then to the other word, which is commitment, right? Uh, you know, commitment from all the way up from the top, from yourself, down through the sales teams, the technical organization that we deal with. It, it's really been, uh, it's really been good. I know, for example, we have, um, uh, as part of our managed services, we lean on Verifone services to provide services direct to customers. And there's been some challenges, you know, especially it's, it's, it's a unique sort of situation. And there's been some challenges, but there's been a commitment and we're working through them and we're making it better. And I have all the confidence that we're going to make a, a scalable solution that's going to help our mutual customers. And we're going to solve, we're going to be solving their problems. Absolutely, we will. Well, uh, uh, it's been a great 20 years. We'll have to see if it lasts another 20 years, but um, certainly hope we have an opportunity to sit here again in a year. I, you know, as we take a look at 2018, there is so much going on, right? You talk about some of the greenfield opportunities, uh, figuring out how to take this technology, really solve problems. That's what we're going to do in partnership together. So I appreciate your time today, and I hope you have uh, a great NRF. Thanks, Rob. Thank you.